Gringo is a new dark comedy featuring a middle management everyman that gets mixed up in life and death situations between drug companies and drug cartels in Mexico. The film stars Charlize Theron, Joel Edgerton, and David Oyelowo, who deserve a lot of credit for adding more depth to these stereotypical characters, a lot more than a film like this deserves. Gringo was advertised as a screwball comedy, but make no mistake, it was not that. This film is not so much a comedy as it is complicated, but in a good way. It keeps you interested with its fun characters and twisting plots, but you really have to stay focused, and unfortunately, a focused audience is not really who they were selling this movie to. This movie here is not filled with one-liners and fart jokes. The bulk of the comedy is from the outrageous situations the characters are put in. You're not going to be laughing every second of this movie, no, but that allows you bigger laughs during the key parts. Unlike what the advertisements make you believe, the gringo of the film, David Oyelowo, uh, is not really kidnapped by cartels at first. His name is Harold, he's in middle management, he hates his crappy life, so he fakes his kidnapping to get the K&R ransom money, only to be caught up in his web of lies, and coincidentally does get kidnapped by drug cartels. A lot of the plot is driven from coincidences, but it flows naturally enough that you never really question what was going on. Yeah, looking back you might have some questions left unanswered like, why didn't the hotel owners just call the cartel instead of just kidnapping them? Or hey, it's pretty coincidental that the cartel was after Harold the exact same time these random people are breaking into the lab to steal the drug, but hey, you get over it. It's a movie. There are so many twists and turns here. Tons of them. Some of them more predictable than others based on the genre, uh, but some were actually pretty quite clever. Nash Edgerton, Joel Edgerton's brother, does a pretty good job of directing here. He takes a story that's too complicated for its own good and he makes it simple enough for the audience to follow. Ringo shows inspiration from the Coen brothers in the Quentin Tarantino films, never really achieving the uniqueness of their better films. Not to say that Gringo is a bad movie, but it aims for greatness and doesn't succeed. If they eliminated one or two of the plot twists, slowed the pacing down, allowed me to soak in some of the tension, I probably would have found this a pretty good suspenseful movie. But as it is now, nah, the plot points, they happen too fast, it makes it seem outrageous, which of course is what they were going for, this dark comedy anyway. While the movie was not action-packed, there were some sequences, you know, some good ones that, you know, kind of pumped me up a little bit. Uh, but unfortunately, this kind of movie, it relied too much on those plot twists and, you know, turns of the script and whatnot. So while I was intrigued, I was also bored because, you know, eh, not enough action. I went into this movie with low expectations, but it was a pleasant surprise. It's not going to win any awards anytime soon, but it did keep me entertained through its entire runtime, which is more than a lot of movies can say these days. 5 out of 10. This movie was not a standard comedy, but the plot did create some outrageous moments that I just couldn't help but laugh at the over-the-topness of it all. 6 out of 10. Charlize Theron, Joel Edgerton, and David Oyelowo, they make this film worth watching. The plot is kind of complex and the characters are stereotypical to say the least, but the actors do such a great job with this that it makes you want to keep watching the movie. So, 5 out of 10. There's a couple of good action sequences here that, uh, that kept me pretty engaged, uh, but overall, it left me wishing for more. So, 4 out of 10. It was a plot-driven story that had a few too many twists and turns to allow me to enjoy any of the suspense within the situations. 4 out of 10. We here at Who's Review give Gringo the overall rating of Wait for the Blu-ray. You have a dark comedy here that features more intrigue than comedy, but it is still entertaining to watch for most of the two-hour runtime, even if you're not laughing the entire way. You have a great cast that takes stereotypical characters, turns them into fun characters that are worth watching, and a twisty plot that can be predictable at times, but engaging nonetheless. This is a pretty good movie, but it's not worth spending the cash on a trip to the theater, so you might as well do what we say and wait for the Blu-ray. Well, there you have it. That's our review of Gringo. What do you think? Do you think we're right on? Far off? Let us know in the comment section below and we'll check it out and respond. We hope you guys had a great time here and thanks for checking us out at Who's Review. I am so mad. I was not recording. I just went through this a thousand times and I nailed it. And then I went to go stop recording and it wasn't even recording. So mad!